Primaries happening across the country today. It's kind of exciting. All eyes on the Senate races in both Arizona and Florida. So what can we expect here to break it down as a guy studying it for us? He's a former Trump campaign pollster, Jim McLaughlin. Jim, good to see you. Great to see you. All right, let's start in uh, Arizona uh, because we want to see what's happening in the uh, the Senate race there because we know the seat is wide open because Jeff Flakes knew he, knew, yep. knew he couldn't win. Big enemy of the president. So you got Martha McSally, Kelly Ward, and Joe Arpaio. Yep. And you still see the president's impact in that race. Because the interesting part is that's why Jeff Flake couldn't run for re-election. Because he had, you know, gone against the president. On every, on every turn. He was very unpopular among Republican primary voters there. And you see both Kelly Ward and Joe Arpaio trying to tie themselves back to the president. But even with all that, looks like Martha McSally's the front runner. The last media poll had him up by about had her up by about 20 points. Yeah, there was no presidential endorsement on that. Even though the president was getting pressured to go with McSally, mm -hmm. she's a veteran too. Let's talk about uh, Florida. And we just talked to Ron DeSantis a short time ago. He's come from as a congressman, military veteran against the veteran Adam Putnam, who's been training his whole life for this. Putnam blew a 20-point lead. It's amazing. Just a couple months ago, Putnam had all the money. All the endorsements. He was the clear establishment f favorite in Florida. And then all of a sudden, Ron DeSantis got the Trump endorsement, the Republican primary good housekeeping seal of approval. He's gone from being down 20 to now there's some folks that say he can win by 20. Right. He just shows the president's power in Florida. He uh, won that, of course, by just a point over Hillary Clinton. Uh, now let's talk about something where I think the most intriguing race uh, mm -hmm. outside what's happening in New Jersey, and that is uh, Rick Scott, Bill Nelson. Expect to lock up up their nominations and go head to head. This is a flat footed tie. Nelson's yep. got had that job for decades. Yep. Not too long ago, the Democrats thought Bill Nelson's going to have another cakewalk. But in the meantime, the Republicans are really excited about Rick Scott, who's been a pretty popular governor. And he's gotten more popular as time's gone on because he's done a really good job and has a great record of success that he can talk to the voters about. Tap it into the Hispanic community. No How doubt. does a rich white guy tap into the Hispanic community? He cares. And he went there. He's gone to P Puerto Rico, I think, at least six times to campaign there. He's learned how to speak. Speak Spanish. He's always down in South Florida and Miami, and he's campaigning vigorously, and he's out there seeing the people. And Bill Nelson yeah. is getting a lot of flack from even Democrats for not campaigning hard enough. He's rusty. He doesn't have real opponents, and he hasn't been out there in a while. It's going to cost him. Now let's look at the 27th district uh, over in. Uh, let's keep it over in Florida on the GOP side. A big roster of contenders. You got Maria Elvira uh, Salazar, Gina Sosa Suarez, but, uh, Bettina Rodriguez Aguilera. Who who, the, who do you think is going to emerge as we turn the page again? I think it's interesting because this is the seat from Ileana Ross Layton where she's retiring. You look at Marivira Salazar, is the Republicans again are really excited about her candidacy. She's a former TV personality and she's from the district. She grew up in the district. She's got a great story as a single mom. And the Democrats, again, thought they were counting on this seat being in the Flipping. bank as part of the blue wave. But they're probably going to nominate Donna Shalala, who's not even from the district. The district's more than 70 yeah. percent Hispanic and she doesn't speak Spanish. University of Miami, as well as uh, Hillary, yeah. uh, a big Clinton supporter. Thanks so much. Jim McLaughlin, great job. All right, coming up straight ahead, President Trump honoring evangelical leaders during a special dinner at the White House. In recent years, the government tried to undermine religious freedom, but the attacks on communities of faith are over.